At a time when the world is eager to return to normalcy by going back to school or work, the mother of a missing Portland boy admits normal is something she hasn't felt in almost 10 years. Normal went away on June 4th, and every day we adjust. We try to survive. Desiree Young's little boy, Kyron Horman, disappeared from Skyline School in Northwest Portland on June 4, 2010. And there's his picture. Prompting the largest search effort in Oregon history. But Kyron Horman has never been found. That night, I never thought in a million years we will be here in 10 years. Never. It's sad and it's disappointing and frustrating. Kyron's father, Kane Horman, still has photos of the missing seven-year-old like these hanging throughout his home. You know, we don't forget, we don't give up. Uh, we talk about him, we still celebrate birthdays and, you know, do stuff for him at holidays and all that kind of stuff. So, Kyron's parents remain hopeful the case will be solved. And the missing boy's mother believes at least one person can provide answers. Terry Horman. Terry, how can you stay silent? Kyron's stepmother has long been the focus of investigators, although she's never been charged. And just tell us, no matter how bad it is, just tell us and end this roller coaster that we're on every single day. A new book titled Boy Missing, The Search for Kyron Horman details the circumstantial evidence surrounding Terry Horman, including claims that several witnesses saw Kyron leave the school with Terry Horman on June 4, 2010. Literally one of the adults said they weren't holding hands walking out together, but they left the school together. Author so Rebecca Morris wrote, Terry acted suspicious and washed Kyron's dirty laundry and his backpack and jacket the day he disappeared. Previously, Terry has admitted failing lie detector tests and family members claim, unlike others, Terry had a difficult time piecing together her whereabouts on June 4th. Terry has denied any involvement in Kyron's disappearance. As the allegations turn dark, Desiree Young admits it's changed her perspective. I always want for Kyron to be able to come home. I know that 10 years later, that's slimmer and slimmer as an option. But I know too that it happens for mothers. It happens, their kids get to come home. So I still am gonna hold on to that. Even though I know the reality of our situation and where we're at today. The boy's father, Kane Horman, maintains Kyron is still out there, waiting to be found. I think he was taken from school. I don't think he's been in the area. I think he's out of the area somewhere. I think he's with somebody else. Um, and I, I, I still will, will repeat that we don't have enough information to really tell us, you know, whether he's alive or not. And there's really nothing conclusive in either direction. So we continue to believe that he's out there. This case started as a search for a little boy. A decade later, Kyron would be approaching his 18th birthday. And sadly, he's still missing. All right, KGW's Kyle Boshi joining us now. So, Kyle, let's start with those allegations in the book, those new allegations. What are investigators saying about those? I reached out to Multnomah County Sheriff's Office and asked, and they couldn't confirm anything in the book. Really, all they're saying at this point is it's an active, ongoing investigation. Okay. We've had so much feedback about these stories, and the majority of it is you know, people that are grateful, who are grateful about uh, Kyron's case being brought back into the spotlight. We did get a few people who were concerned that the case is being sensationalized, or they're wondering why this one missing little boy gets so much attention when there are so many other missing kids in Oregon and nationwide. I mean, you know this case so well. What, what do you say to those concerns? I think they're fair concerns. I mean, yes, there is a lot of drama surrounding this case, but at the end of the day, it really is about a missing boy, Kyron Horman, and he is the focus. So we need to remember that through all of this. Secondarily, this case is unusual because of the circumstances. This is a little boy who disappeared from school. I mean, that doesn't happen very often that a child goes missing from school. Also, you know, a lot of missing kids, they're found. They're either lost, they wander off, Maybe they're abducted by a family member during custody battle, but ultimately they're found. This case is highly unusual in the fact that 10 years later, we still have no idea what happened to this little boy. Yeah, and speaking of, it's been 10 years. I mean, are there concerns about this case going cold? 
you know, I asked Kane and Desiree that same question, and they acknowledged the fact that that is a concern. You know, some of the original investigators, the detectives, the prosecutors in the case, many of them have moved on or they've retired. And so with that, you lose some of the institutional knowledge. Kane says in some ways, though, that may be a benefit. You've got some new eyes looking at this case. But at the same time, you worry that as time passes on, maybe people forget. Yeah, well, we appreciate you bringing the story back into the spotlight. Kyle Boshi, thank you.